Thank you for welcoming me onto your screens, onto your headphones, depending on how you're watching this. I'm Eddie, and this is The Rollback. Folks, I'm going to talk to you today about Dr. Sleep, aka the best Stephen King film ever made, Fight Me. So, I hope no one gets offended by this. I think I prefer Dr. Sleep over The Shining. Now, let me just be very clear about this. I don't really have a personal connection to The Shining, so if you prefer that film, I fully understand. That said, though, this movie, I think, took the bare elements of The Shining and elevated everything about it. It added more layers to The Shining itself, kind of explored the depths of the powers and its limits or lack thereof. It created an entire cult called the True Knot that are trying to take steam away from people. People that, other people that can shine, but not everyone has shine in them. Some have a little bit, but others, oh, well, are telekinetic. Or telekinesis? Can communicate with the dead also. An astral project. A lot of things. And that said, the movie actually opens on quite a dark note. Uh, little Danny Torrance is now a man, and not necessarily a good one. He uses alcohol to numb himself from the shine. He doesn't want to, to deal with it anymore. He wants to move on with his life. Well, not necessarily move on with his life, but maybe stop talking to dead people. Uh, we actually get an appearance by Dick Holleran, which is somewhat haunting when he tells him, hey, doc, you, the least you can do is leave her money. Like, looking down with disappointment at this kid who he tried to mentor, who ended up just shunning away the thing that made him special in the first place maybe a gift that he could have used and a gift that he actually does decide to begin to use at the end he, that's so the movie's called dr sleep after danny torrance and everything he does for these old folks he ends up wanting to go sober he gets a job at a hospital at a hospice center um and they call him dr sleep because he's an orderly who helps the patients drift off into sleep that's his calling, I guess. That's the way he uses his shine to help people cross over into the other side peacefully. That said, though, not only uh, is this about Danny Torrance, but also about the True Knot and Abra. The True Knot being led by Rose the Hat. Um, other people that can shine that use their powers in different ways. We have a pusher, we have a tracker, we have a projector. Rose the Hat is somewhat the, I guess, ringleader of them all. She finds whales. She finds people who have shine in them that they can use and take out of. Um, she's a devious, monstrous villain who's been around longer than any of us have been alive. People who use this steam can live decades, centuries. One of the oldest people, Grandpa Flick, apparently cheered the gladiators, watched empires rise and fall. He, villages were scared of his name, you know, scared of the very person he was. He died a king. Well, a king that cycled out in agonizing pain that was eaten by his, you know, leftovers. But also, I think the part of this film that might be the best might be the introduction of the character of Abra. Uh, she's a young girl who can shine, possibly sh possibly brighter than anyone else. She can telecommunicate from across the country at the age of seven, let alone being able to use other powers, being able to take over other people, astral project herself into other people, being able to give a trap uh, to help battle the true knot when Danny and his best friend Billy have to try and fight them that way they won't take and kill Abra it's just a great story all around and the crazy thing is is that you don't really it's not a direct sequel to The Shining until the third act when we actually get to the Overlook Hotel Danny Torrance going in there waking up the spirits that he locked away so long and unleashing them on Rose the Hat here's the thing the ghosts they're hungry and they don't just want Rose they want Danny too Danny, the first thing that he did was open the boilers to let the place explode. Um, it would come down and destroy him and Rose alike, if nothing else. Abra able to get away. Danny Torrance convincing himself that he needs to do this. He needs to finish the job and destroy the Overlook Hotel. Right before the spirits can really force him to turn off the, the boilers before the hotel explodes, he has just enough willpower to pull back, stop, take a minute to breathe right before the end, and he goes back to his happiest moment, a moment when he was with his mother. And then the Overlook Hotel explodes, and he dies. Well, dies in our world, at least. We see that he is somewhat of a mentor figure now to Abra, the same way D Dick Holleran was to him. And frankly, I do hope we get Abra. I hope we get another spin-off film of this, maybe 20 years down the line, where Abra's in Danny Torrance's shoes. You never know, but I would look forward to it. But that said, Dr. Sleep, for me, is an A+. 
I loved all the world building and all the things that it did. And I, I can't wait to see what else they'll do. Hopefully, Mike Flanagan is allowed to continue the series. Um, but yeah, what'd y'all think? Go ahead and comment down below. We greatly appreciate it. And we'll talk to y'all later. We'll see everyone.